Good evening and welcome to the Woodhaven Brownstown Board of Education regular meeting of Tuesday, April 13th, 2021. Call to order at 5.30 p.m. This meeting is taking place in person and via Zoom webinar. Public notice of the steps necessary to participate in this meeting virtually were posted on the district website. Mrs. Abair, would you please take roll? Mrs. Pimer. Mrs. Burton Kelsey. Here. Mr. Harris. Here. Mrs. Paget. Here. Mr. Burke. Mrs. Bauer Perry. Here. Mrs. Berry. Here. Mr. Greathead. Here. Mr. Belcher. Here. Mr. Roberts. Here. Mr. Smith. Here. Ms. Vesprimi. Here. Mr. Salah. Here. Mr. Satterfield. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, at this time, I ask everybody to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item C is approval of the agenda. The suggested motion is to approve the agenda as recommended. I'll entertain a motion. Motion by Harris, supported by Burton Kelsey. Any discussion? Hearing none, Mrs. Abair, would you please take a roll call vote? Mrs. Pimer. Mrs. Pimer. Mrs. Burton Kelsey. Yes. Mr. Harris. Yes. Mrs. Paget. Yes. Mr. Burke. Mrs. Bauer Perry. Yes. Mrs. Perry. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. The motion carries. Item two is hearing of the public, which would be to address topics that appear on the agenda this evening, including the reaffirmation of the district's extended continuity of learning plan. Uh, comments are limited to five minutes. Uh, please, uh, if you are in person, complete a comment card for the board secretary, or if you are on Zoom, please raise your hand and uh, call, state your name when called upon. Any topics not listed on the agenda will be heard before adjournment. All right, seeing none, we'll move on. Number three, item number three is the consent agenda. The suggested motion is to approve the consent agenda as recommended. I'll entertain a motion. Support. Motion by Barry, supported by Harris. Any discussion? Hearing none, Mrs. Abair, would you please take a roll call vote? Mrs. Pimer? Mrs. Burton Kelsey? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mrs. Paget? Yes. Mr. Burke? Mrs. Bauer Perry? Yes. Mrs. Perry? Thank you. That motion carries. Item number four is personnel recommendations. This evening we have four recommendations for board consideration. They are all Schedule B recommendations. The suggested motion is that the following recommendations be approved en masse, uh, and they have been reviewed by the HR Committee of the Board. Sorry for that. Uh, the suggested motions that the following recommendations be approved in mass. They are Brianne Heimer, middle school track assistant coach, Haley Neal, seventh grade softball head coach, Dave Rudisell, eighth grade softball assistant coach, and Jillian Schoenberg, seventh grade softball assistant coach. All recommendations are effective April 14th, 2021. Is there a motion? Support. Motion by Harris, supported by Barry. Any discussion? Are all these teams still the seventh and eighth grade girls softball team? Do they both they both have teams? I have not heard of the major difference that I believe so. Any other questions? Hearing none, Mrs. Aber, would you please take a roll call vote? Mrs. Pimer? Mrs. Burton Kelsey? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mrs. Paget? Yes. Mr. Burke? Mrs. Bauer Perry. Oh. Thank you. Mrs. Berry. That motion carries. Uh, Mr. Harris, I'll follow up for you and get the uh, numbers of uh, individuals that came out and are on those teams at the seventh and eighth grade level for uh, softball. Uh, Mr. Roberts, would you please introduce the uh, newest members of our coaching staff? Yeah. Mr. Uh, Dave Rudisell is here. The front, um, he currently works for uh, at Woodhaven High School as a security monitor. 
Um, he's also our current eighth grade uh, assistant football coach, and he has over seven years of uh, youth coach experience in football and baseball. And he's looking forward to working with our uh, softball team. Uh, Ms. Schoenberg is here in the back. Uh, she's getting her first opportunity to coach softball after an extensive travel and high school playing career. She's experienced as a youth baseball coach and is looking forward to working with the softball team. Uh, she's a graduate of Riverview High School where she was a member of the National Honor Society and several other, or other organizations. We're looking forward to her working with our seventh graders. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. And welcome aboard. Sorry, we have one more. I did not see her come in there behind me. Um, Ms. Heimler's here. Um, she's been uh, supporting the Woodhaven track team for the past uh, year, for the past several years as a pole vault, long jump, and high jump coach. Um, she's currently a personal trainer, and we're looking forward to her working with our middle school athletes, preparing them for the high school track team. Fantastic. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, General. Or, uh, thank you, Dave and uh, ladies, for joining us this evening. Really appreciate it. Item number five on the agenda is the Woodhaven Brownstown School District's extended continuity of learning plan. The Woodhaven Brownstown School District continues to offer daily in person instruction uh, to approximately 70% of our students and daily remote instruction to approximately 30% of our students. In both delivery models, Woodhaven Brownstown School District teachers deliver instruction utilizing Woodhaven Brownstown School District resources and instructional practices. Our special education students and English language learners continue to receive high levels of support based on specific student needs, both in person and remotely, many times utilizing a combination of both practices. The most, two, the most recent two-way interaction rates for our remote students are from March 3rd through the 9th, 98.3%, March 10th through the 16th, 98%, March 17th through the 23rd, 99.2%, and March 24th through the 26th, 97.3%. Does the Board of Education have any questions related to our current and continuing extended continuity of learning plan? Okay, thank you very much for reaffirming the district's extended continuity of learning plan. I'd also like to suggest as a starting point for discussion and planning for the 2021-22 school year uh, that we begin thinking about the following uh, programming. Uh, at the elementary schools, uh, we staff as if all students were returning to in-person learning, and we provide one additional staff person per grade level district-wide to serve as a remote teacher, and one additional elementary resource room teacher uh, to serve students remotely district-wide. At our middle schools, uh, we staff as if all students were returning to in-person learning. We also provide the equivalent of up to one additional staff person per core academic uh, grade or per, per core academic subject uh, to serve both middle schools and provide one additional resource room teacher per building. At the high school, we again staff as if all students were returning to in-person learning. The balance of additional remote staff including resource room support, will be based on core subjects, but the delineation of those will have to be by courses within the subject, not by grade level. Please understand that I'm not suggesting this as a means of forcing in-person learning, uh, but it gives us a starting point for providing remote services while having as many teachers as possible in person, which would have the side effect of reducing class sizes when we do have students out for remote learning. Uh, the other question that, that we need to consider is, what do we do when remote learning is requested, however, was not effective in the past? And at that time, we have a conversation. Uh, I, and the conversation starts with uh, the barriers to in-person learning, and then the alternatives to remote learning as well. Uh, something to keep in mind is that our ability to continue to provide the level of remote instruction and the instructional model that we have provided this school year is contingent upon an extension of the seat time waivers that are in place for this school year. Otherwise, remote learning would have to take place through a Michigan Department of Education approved virtual learning program similar to the Maple Grove model. 
Uh, the reason why we're able to do the, what we're doing this school year is because of a seat time waiver, uh, which is uh, not something that's done on an annual basis. I'd also like to suggest that the next steps be engaging the appropriate administrative teaching and support staffs to fine tune what I've outlined here uh, to bring back a more refined recommendation to the Board of Education for next school year. But I did want to uh, present this as a starting point for the conversation, provide the board an opportunity for any initial feedback that you may have, uh, and then engage on those next steps. So at this time, I would uh, open it up for any questions or comments from the board. I have two, I have to do this, I remember. Um, one with the outlining staffing that you have here. Do you know what that would would entail as far as new hires required? Um, I, I don't, uh, you, because it would balance with the retirements that that we would have. Okay. Uh, but uh, so probably net effect of two, uh, six, as many as ten. 10 to 12 new hires, perhaps, but I, I think it would still need some refinement. Okay. Uh, but I would also uh, suggest that uh, for the short term, those uh, positions would be funded through the federal uh, COVID oh, relief God. funds that are being provided. Yes. Okay. And the other one, can you explain a little more about why the seat time waiver is needed? I, I mean, I, I have a child that's online and he's in class all the time so i don't i didn't quite understand that when i read it i i guess the best way for me to explain it and i think stacy might be able to help me but your child i mean they call it a seat time waiver because not physically in a seat in school sure and so prior to the pandemic remote learning was done through a, a department of education approved provider maple grove is one you know that model is one example but there, there are companies that, that provide that service. It is, uh, and then our teachers' engagement in that process is as a mentor. mentor yeah. yeah. And so we had that uh, option to do our remote learning this current no, school right, year. Right. Uh, now, again, the reason why we're able to do what we're doing is because of the seat time waiver. We're able to count the full day of instruction as if the student was sitting in, in the uh, physical classroom. Uh, because a waiver is provided so it would either have to be a waiver provided or a change to the current requirement because i think yes. anything that our teachers are going to do is going to be way better than a third party right so yeah so would it be a change in the requirement from the state level which, yeah okay or a waiver I, I yes okay the most likely thing to happen would be an extension of the waiver that's in place for this school year okay i think that I, I hope i helped to answer that yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, Be year, careful what you say. Maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> this year, there's a time and hour waived for all districts across the state. So that's why you'll see some districts that have these Wednesdays off. So that's inclusive of all, you know, all districts across the state. In the past, there's always been what we call that seat time waiver. So either one of two things could happen. We could fall in line with the old regulations of seat time waiver, or there could be an extension of the hours and days like it is currently. Okay. That Mark, might help. Under, okay. Understanding that everything is fluid. Yeah. Can you provide us in the next, um, maybe at the next board meeting in May, a timeline so that we know. Oh yeah, I won't wait that long. I just wanted to have this as a starting conversation, but yeah, okay. if, uh, based on your questions, I'll, and you know, no uh, reservations. We'll get moving immediately. And yes, within the next report, I'll provide you a, a more uh, detailed timeline. Okay, detailed timeline for planning for next school year. I think is yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. Like, well, when, yes. like when we'll have surveys. If that's what we're going to do for the parents. oh yeah, so that, all that the level of detail that you know we sure. we have now learned we need. Yeah, but I also think the the plan. Uh, is is meant to you know, where I hope we end up with the plan is, is with a degree of flexibility. Mm -hmm. you know, we just found out this week that uh, our early middle college students at uh, Wayne County Community College will be virtual in the fall. Mm -hmm. So they're telling us five months from now that they the fall semester will be virtual. Oh. And, and I so it's like this balance of when do we when do we try to gauge what a parent's interests are in their child's education. If we were to ask them today, 
if the pandemic, uh, you know, if you read the headlines, is, is surging mm -hmm. and, and not doing too well. Where will we be five five months from now, or when is the best time to to try to gain that information? I, I think a very flexible plan. If we could put a very flexible plan in place, we would be able to adapt uh, rather quickly. And uh, yeah, the sooner we can start getting rolling on, you know, if it is 10 to 12 additional staff mm -hmm. members that, that we're looking to bring on board, uh, we need to begin the recruitment process on that too. For sure. Yeah. I, will, I don't know if there's really an answer to this, but I know last year we didn't find out till last minute about the seat time waiver um, without a lot of time. Has there been any discussion as far as you know about that being extended or are we just thinking it may be? I, we've asked the questions. I, I think you know them uh, yeah. heavily involved in, in the lobbying and uh, th it's a question that we're, we're starting to press and I think we'll start to see it tied uh, closely to you know, the budget approval process. Now, okay. The state's required to have a budget approved by July 1 uh that did not happen last school year i don't believe and no. uh, not many people are optimistic that it'll happen this school year uh but uh okay. we'll continue to press for it because uh, we, we need Target it for planning plan purposes. Knowing that. yes okay. thank you yeah. any other thoughts or questions before i move on Thank you. And as always, if any other questions come up, please let me know, uh, but I will keep you updated. Item number six, under business, uh, under new business, we have the 2020-21 budget amendment number two. So at this time, I'll ask Mr. Smith to please present to the Board of Education uh, the second budget amendment. Uh, he went over this with the uh, Finance Committee of the Board two weeks ago. Uh, so I'll ask that he go over it now uh, for, the full board, for the rest of the board. Good evening. So tonight we're going to look at the second amendment. Uh, we decided around this time last year, probably in May, that we would be doing three amendments to the budget this year as opposed to the typical two. That was because we entered into the fiscal year with a lot of unknowns, uh, with not only enrollment projections, but as well uh, what the state aid fund was going to look like. In December, we knew what the state aid fund dollars were going to be. Enrollment, audited enrollment numbers were still not in because they switched from a 90-10% for enrollment to a super blend, and uh, no one could really wrap their arms around what that super blend would look like. So as of December 20th, we knew what we were, uh, our, our membership enrollment was going to be credited as. So in this first slide, it's just the uh, a pie chart to show where our revenues come from. You can see that 80% of our revenues come from the state. So when the state does not have a balanced budget, it makes it hard for us to understand or to, to project or know what our funding is going to look like. So breaking this down into numbers, um, in the December amendment, we were projecting about $63.7 million in revenue. Uh, you're gonna see that note at the bottom. And I know it's kind of hard to see, it's quite small on the screen. So I'm gonna, you may hear me reference this back a few times. Um, in June, we decided to take the funded projects, which is our federal funds, Title One, Two, Three, Four, at risk and combine it from uh, a separate fund into the general fund. It made the accounting for that easier, made us be able to see the functions and objects where we were spending the money a little bit easier. And it's also how our audited financials um, take place when we are audited in September. In doing so, we understood that grant dollars, you spend, you, you budget a revenue and you, and you spend dollar for dollar. Um, so on the balance sheet, it, it was a net zero. It didn't show any difference. But when calculating our fund equity percentage, that increased expenditure amount from the grant expenditures was actually decreasing our fund equity. So when you look at the numbers, the percentage of change from amended, for example, uh, state is not actually down 60%. <laughs> it is uh, those monies. I, I pulled the grant funds back out and there, you'll see that a little bit later on in the presentation. So when you look at these revenues and these expenditures that look like they've taken this huge uh, decrease, uh, that's not 100%. This is, this is just, you're going to see them separated out now. This is to say consistent with the way it's been done in the past. We feel it's important to be reporting a consistent fund equity percentage, and this is the best way to, to make that happen. 
do you want me to hold questions to the end? Or? No, go ahead if you have questions. So that would really rectify itself on the percentages next year, right? It, it actually said on the next, the final amendment. The next amendment. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Uh, these are expenditures by function code. So function codes would be, um, you know, the way that we do our accounting software, it's going to show the breakdown. Oops, there we go. Uh, from instruction, instructional support, general business, operate, uh, operations and maintenance, transportation, central services, and athletics. Uh, once again, you can see operations and maintenance. We did not decrease Mike Belcher's budget by $2.5 million. A lot of that was federal funding or federal grants that got moved over into the grant uh, will be accounted for in the grant fund that you'll see a little bit later. So we are projecting total revenues of 56.9 million and total expenses or expenditures of 60 million, 60.1 million. And to go a little bit deeper, our expenditures, we can also break down by object code. So salaries, um, are they're gonna, uh, I'm, my apologies. Uh, you see the decrease in, the, in salaries of 2.6 million. Those are salaries that we're paying for out of grant funds, at risk, Title I, and, uh, and uh, so on and so forth. So here's the summary page. Um, this, the, all the way to the left, you'll see the audited financials from June 30 of last year. We had a fund balance of 13.2 million, which was a 23.69% fund balance, fund equity percentage. And then you can see the progression from the, the original budget in June. Uh, we were projecting a fund equity percentage of 10.61. Thankfully, we're not going to realize that. And then the amended budget, the First Amendment in December, we were projecting 18.69. And then you see that set aside of $2.4 million. That's the set aside for the band uniforms, transportation, and buses. We uh, those were moved into the earmarked funds were moved over into a separate fund, but we're still accounting for them in our general fund again to keep that fund equity percentage consistent. And then the amended budget that is being presented today is going to show a fund balance of 12.5 million with uh, a percentage at 20.8 percent. Now, this is the grant funds that I was speaking of. So we're projecting grant fund revenue of 8 million. And then you're gonna see the expenditures also 8 million because what we budget is what we spend. But this way, the way that we break it down now, you can see the, the way it's broken up between instruction, instructional support, general business, operations and maintenance. Um, that's where you can actually see the, the, the difference in how we're spending those grant funds. And Something else uh, we've been made aware of is the American Rescue Plan that President Biden signed, I think it was March 11th, um, is going to be, it appropriated a lot of money to schools. You'll hear a lot of us, a lot of times we talk about COVID grants or ESSER, it all, it's kind of the same um, umbrella of funds. It's all federal grant dollars that has been appropriated to schools to really help us with the added expenditures that we ha are, are recognizing. Um, just to, and I don't have the slide in here, but um, there have been five, there are five, so the COVID Act, the COVID Act that we got in July of last year, um, CRF, COVID Relief Funds, SR1, SR2, and SR3. So over the course of all five of these grants, uh, we're going to be, it's, it's a very large amount of dollars, federal dollars that are, are flowing into our district that we're accounting for. Um, I believe it's around 10 or $11 million to help offset, um, you know, potential uh, salary expense. And then of course, the increased PPE chemicals for cleaning. That's how that money has been appropriated. I also wanted to give here. Yes, just, sir. Just a, just a, I'm a non-financial person. Yep. Okay. Everybody probably knows that's a me. <laughs> so all the money coming in from the federal government, is that, included in our fund balance numbers or is that completely? it's separate it's separate yep that's so, it was when we did the original the a budget amendment in december that's when i realized it was deflating our fund equity percentage so if you two slides back where i had the grant slides yeah that's where that money's being accounted for now okay so the 20.8 percent fund balance that we're showing as of today does not include any federal money correct okay 
and very simply then, how did we go from, how did we go down 3% in our fund equity from the 20, what do you, what do you yeah, From the audited financials yeah. 30 of 2020, where we had 13.2 million. Yeah. Just real simple. How did we go down 3%? Jen, you can probably tell me faster. <laughs> Okay. Added expenditures. Added expenditures. Correct. Uh, different than any federal funding. Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'll ask you later what those were. <laughs> Is there another question? I said I'll ask you later what the added expenditures were. You don't have to tell okay. me right now. Uh, and then also here, I wanted to give a history of the state aid uh, per pupil allocation. From 2017 to 2021, you can see in 20 and 21, it was a flat amount. I did read, uh, I'll go to the, the re revenue estimating conference uh, in May here in about three weeks. But as of right now, they're saying the anticipated increase, if we were to be given the minimum, uh, the minimum that would, it, it, there is an increase really in, in essence, what I'm saying is we're not, we shouldn't see a flat amount, but there will be an increase this year. And, um, and so I hope to have more information on that at the next meeting. Um, like I said, I think the revenue estimating conference is, is May 19th. And then something else is we did not amend the non-major funds back in December because we were really primarily concerned with the uh, general fund. So I did, I am amending the some of the non-major funds to the CAFE fund. You can see the impact to the budget. We will be increasing that fund equity around $145,000. The uh, skipping the tote fund, the sinking fund, we'll be adding to the fund equity for the sinking fund or approximately $264,000. The tote and special revenue funds are zero balance funds because you spend, you, you, ex you budget or you expend the revenues that come in. So those, those always end with a, a zero fund balance. Any other questions? When this, I was when I was looking at the expenditures, so am I looking at this right that if I combine the instruction and the instructional support, it's like seventy seven percent of the expenditures? Yes, I think that's great. And I think the the internal set asides I think is important too. We just started doing that recently. We I just started doing that, and, and really, it shows as an expenditure on the on the general fund side. But I, I believe that we're going to remove that going forward. Um, we're going to continue doing it, but it's not a true expenditure until we expend that money. You know, if we were to use it to purchase buses, then the expenditure would hit the, yeah. the, the okay. fund. So. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Just so you know, our timeline, we will be working on the forecast budget and the final amended budget between, you know, mid-May to mid-June like we typically do. So there's a very short window of time between this amendment and the final amendment. But um, in the meantime, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. That has to be done by June 30th? It does. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Josh. Uh, so at this time, the suggested motion is that the Board of Education approve the second budget amendment and their accompanying resolutions uh, for the school year as recommended. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Barry, supported by Harris. Any questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in our, I'm sorry, Mrs. Abair, please take a roll call vote. Mrs. Pimer? Mrs. Burton Kelsey? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mrs. Paget? Yes. Mr. Burke? Mrs. Bauer Perry? Mrs. Bauer Perry? Mrs. Berry? Okay. Thank you. That motion carries. Item number two is approval of contract for technology design services for the 2021 bond program. On March 5th, 2021, requests for proposal were sought for technology design services for the 2021 bond program. On April 6th, interviews were conducted with three firms. The interviews were attended by Plant Moraine Cressa, Woodhaven Brownstown School District Administration, and members of the Facilities and Operations Committee of the Board. As a result of those interviews, the suggested motion is that the Board of Education approve the recommendation for contract to communications by design with a set technology design services fee of 4%. I'll entertain a motion. Move. Motion by Harris, supported by Burton Kelsey. Any discussion? Right. Go ahead. 
as a <laughs> member of that committee, I, I felt that uh, communication by design provides the best curriculum and technology offering for our district. Uh, we currently use CBD for training in our district and uh, have had a great experience for them. So I'm going to ask, and I did look through it, and I have it up in front of me, the the letter and stuff like that, but I couldn't glean exactly what we're purchasing. <laughs> so can someone tell me exactly what Come we're purchasing? Come on up to the podium, Mike. <laughs> kind of like me and finance. It's what I felt like. I just I was like, I'm not sure exactly what we're buying here. So Thank communications you. by design is going to provide a very similar service to us in regards to what we if you think architect, okay. right? So they're going to help us in the IT world as far as designing our infrastructure, but they're also gonna work through us with device purchases. Uh, something that's unique about their company is that they also offer a, like, uh, a professional development program that is separate from all of the other uh, organizations out there that kind of do this service. So not only will they work through picking out what is the appropriate things for us through all different kinds of modalities. They will also provide like um, ways for the teach the end user to incorporate into that into their lesson planning and all of that, and actually use the stuff. So whereas before we would buy stuff, right? We would just say, for instance, we buy a TV, we put it on the wall, and we would get user training of how to turn that thing on. They take it a step further to show you actually how to integrate that into uh, using it as a teacher. So we're really buying consulting services, right? For infrastructure, for sure. storage, yes. device. Things but there's also architectural side of it as well because they're going to design. So yeah. when you decide, you know, if you're going to do a big tech purchase, there's a lot of things that go into that from your infrastructure and all of that. They provide that service as well. That's their core service. Okay. That's what we're really purchasing right now. We're working through the professional development side. That's a kind of a separate thing. So right now, what you're approving tonight is more of a design service, like architectural. And do we know what the timing is the, of the project that they're going to? Well, they will be on for the entire bond with us. Oh. Just like, the, just like our uh, GMB. Okay. It's the exact same. Okay. Thank you. I don't know if you have any more questions, Laura. Okay. Thanks. I hope that helped. It did. Very much. Thank you. Well, one of the things that was um, helpful to me was that both our curriculum director and our technology director were there. And with the depth of understanding that they have about those two sides of, of what's going on, mm -hmm. I'm very confident that we're, we've picked the best of the three that we interviewed. Very confident. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Aber, would you please take a roll call vote? Mrs. Pimer? Mrs. Burton Kelsey? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mrs. Padgett? Yes. Mr. Burke? Mrs. Bauer Perry? Mrs. Berry. Thank you. That motion carries. I want to thank uh, Rob Kakoski from Plant Moran. He's here this evening. He uh, assisted with the interviews as well. And uh, Sarah from Communications by Design is here with us as well. So thank you for being here this evening. Uh, awesome. Very nice. Item number three is approval of an overnight, uh, overnight trip proposal, uh, the Woodhaven High School Marching Band. Camp uh, Simpson Park uh, in Romeo, Michigan in August. The Woodhaven High School Marching Band is tentatively planning for their annual multi-day, multi-night marching band camp at Simpson Park Camp in Romeo, Michigan, August 2nd through the 7th. Uh, participation in the camp will be contingent upon health and safety factors related to the pandemic. All chaperone agreements and background checks will be processed before the camp occurs. The suggested motion is that the Board of Education approve the overnight marching band camp for the Woodhaven High School Marching Band, as recommended. I'll entertain a motion. So motion by Burton Kelsey, supported by Barry. Any discussion? Hearing none, Mrs. Zabair, would you please take a roll call vote? Mrs. Pimer? Mrs. Burton Kelsey? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mrs. Padgett? Yes. Mr. Burke? Mrs. Bauer Perry? Mrs. Barry? That motion carries. Thank you very much. Item number seven under reports, under superintendent's report, the uh, following resignations have been accepted. They are Matthew Lominen, Woodhaven High School broadcasting and English arts teacher, English language arts teacher, Alexandra Opaski, varsity volleyball assistant coach, and Nicole Tangway, special services paraprofessional. 
Uh, as this is the last, uh, or as this is the final board meeting before the May 4th school bond uh, proposal election, I'd like to take this opportunity to remind and encourage all supporters of the Woodhaven Brownstown School District to vote anytime between now and May 4th in support of our zero tax rate increase proposal. This proposal will bring $144 million to the district with no increase to the current tax rate for our community and will be utilized to have a transformational impact at our elementary and middle schools. In 2015, our community supported a $57.4 million zero tax rate proposal and every school in our district received improvements and upgrades, but I think all would agree uh, that the uh, improvements at Woodhaven High School with that bond proposal were most substantial. Uh, like last time, the, 2000, the 2021 bond proposal uh, would see all schools receiving improvements and upgrades. However, this time the greatest impact will be seen in our K through nine buildings, our elementary schools and our middle schools. The uh, four broad areas that we will impact are facility improvements, technology and equipment, program enhancements, and athletics and playground improvements. Uh, those are the four main areas in which the bond will address, uh, but some more specifics uh, we're planning classroom additions, one-to-one -one technology devices, replacing and improving outdated systems, and improvements that will promote health and safety. So between now and May 4th, I ask that you please remember to vote and support the continued excellence in the Woodhaven Brownstown School District. Thank you very much. Item number eight is hearing of the public. This would be for items that did not appear on this evening's agenda. Uh, again, a comment card would be appreciated. And uh, if you are joining us via Zoom, uh, please uh, raise your hand if you would like to be heard. All right, hearing none, we'll go on to item number nine, board member comments. I have one, just one. Um, we seem to have a lot of turnover in our athletic coaching positions, which I, I guess is pretty normal as, as people come and go. But it's been a while since um, I've heard a discussion about what our overall athletic philosophy is. And I know Mr. Fast put together a really, um, or updated our handbook a few years ago, and I think there were five C's, some of which I can remember. But I'd like to ask the right committee, and I don't know if it's the board or if it's athletics, to just update us on, just in general, what is our athletic philosophy. We've got a lot of teams. we got a lot of coaches. We're uh, a destination district. I think we do great things with our teams, but just a, an update on the overall philosophy would be would be appreciated. We'll work on that. Thank you. Just win. Hmm? <laughs> just, just win. Just win. Yeah. Well, and I, I know I simple? had I had chatted with you a little bit, Mark, but I think the same thing for the band kind of community. I don't know if that falls under athletics or if it's completely, you know, separate, but same kind of thing. And then I have a couple other comments. So you, I'm, done. That it, yep, I'm done. Um, so I don't, I don't, Mr. Slaz here. So maybe he can confirm for me, but um, my, my term as your, one of your PAC reps ends in June and I'm not going to be seeking re, re uh, nomination for that. So I think there's, a, is there still an opening for that? There is. Okay. One. Yep. And we have a meeting with parents on May 2nd. Okay, so Ms. Albano is what is the other rep? Yeah, it's a three year term. So any and the only requirement is that you have a student in the district with an IEP. So if anyone's interested in that, I'll finish up my sixth year this June. I'm not going to take that back on, but um, <laughs> you can nominate. You can nominate, but I, uh, I it's been great. I, I mean, I, I highly recommend any parent that, especially somebody that has a younger child and needs to learn. I mean, the, the support that you get from that community was just incredible. And I learned a ton and made a lot of great friends. And um, and I still plan to attend several meetings, but I don't want to be required to attend all those meetings. So uh, the one last time was actually on um, picky eaters, which I don't have a picky eater right now. I used to, but it was really, really great. Um, so the presentations are great. Um, so I don't know how many parents are out there listening, but um, if your kid has an IEP and you want to learn more about special education and support them. It's a great thing to do. Our next meeting for that is May 13th. So, yep. I have two things there. Um, one, they all kind of fall under mic, I think. But, um, one was the bus. 
We, I'll just speak to that. I think some, some of what I'll, I'll have to get back with, with uh, some of the, the questions, but I, I can just say based on conversations that I've had with the athletic department and followed up with Mike, uh, you know, our goal is to have one bus per team, uh, but we're also dealing with a, a severe and significant uh, shortage of bus drivers. And that's why we're engaging with even a second uh, company to uh, help us with, with the uh, transportation needs. Uh, now to, but to your point, we've had, uh, I, I've had this conversation before. I always feel that if we are going to transport students somewhere, uh, we need to be fully prepared and ready uh, to bring students home. And uh, you know, the, the last thing I, I would want to see is that quiet, introverted student uh, not speak up because they don't have a ride home uh, from, from an event and, and we don't have a school bus there. Uh, so I, I, I just always think it's the uh, the safest thing to do. It's the uh, the the cost of doing business, uh, but it's uh, you know, just philosophically, I think I think it's a, a best practice. And then I, it also goes hand in hand with with some coaches too. And maybe this speak would, would speak more to us needing to develop a, more of a philosophy. I can fully understand that if I live over by, uh, let's say, Yake Elementary School. And uh, my middle school child has a, an athletic event in Trenton that uh, it could add an hour to my day to have to follow the bus all the way back to Brownstown Middle School to pick up my child and then bring him back to you know, home over by Yake as an example, when it would be just so much more convenient for that child to ride home with me from the, the school there in Trenton. Uh, so that, that I, I can understand that. But I also understand the, the coaching philosophy. We ride together to the event as a team. We ride home as a team as well. And so I think further discussion as far as how that philosophy plays out. Parent, not a lot, but there was a couple parent concerns just on the number of kids on the bus on the way there. Again, on yeah. the way back, um, you know, it wasn't as bad uh, because of the kids, you know, leaving and going in different directions. But I know that, you know, teams were late on Saturday. Uh, because it was waiting for buses it seemed like they're you know again i don't know if it falls on our facility or sports administration i mean i know the coaches order buses um, but who checks to make sure that the buses are ordered and make sure so i don't know if that's our you know temporary ad and if it is our temporary ad it needs to be probably followed by our administrator if that's mike or whoever it is because you know we have somebody that's never you know, really decides that you know uh, is it teacher and a um, coach. Uh, the other thing I'd, I'd like to uh, to request and have discussion on is of uh, the board is going back to presentations. I understand with COVID, maybe not the best idea to be in schools, but have our principals come to us now that we're in person meetings. Uh, maybe we can even do two principals to kind of catch up before the school year. But I know we, we get weekly updates, but I'd like to hear from from our, you know, principals and, you know, firsthand and, and what's happening in there. But also, you know, I go back to not just our principals, but also what I call our department heads, um, you know, our athletic director, our, our security person that's, you know, we still haven't heard from. I know I've requested that before. Um, uh, so I, that's one big thing is I, I like to definitely would like to propose us bringing our administrators back into the meetings now that we're meeting again in person. Uh, the other thing that I had was again, going back to facilities, 
just Mike, I'd like to know whose responsibility is it with our facilities? Uh, the beginning of a fall sport, beginning of a winter sport. Who is it? Whose responsibility is it to check our facilities that they're ready for that sport? Or um, it depends on. There's a lot of different variables. Um, okay. If if you're if you're specifically talking about the scoreboard, that, 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 I mean, I'm, as far as it, I mean, if it's the basketball, if it's the basketball court and the lighting and the gym, if it's baseball, if it's the field and, and the traditionally scoreboard. Traditionally, the athletic director works with the coaches to, to, to gain knowledge of any deficiencies that we have and to report those through like some kind of work order system. If you're talking as far as like lighting inside a gymnasium. But as far as like equipment or modular type things that the, the sport uses, for instance, uh, portable uh, portable basketball scoring machines or any kind of scoreboard type equipment or any kind of judging type equipment or even accessories that you would that are mobile that you bring in to kind of facilitate a, a, a sport that would be handled right through uh, Dave. Well, at the time it would be Dave Bass or the athletic director. Mark, would you agree with that? Would it be the AD or would it be the facility and operation manager? I'd be happy to take your question and get a response for you, Mr. Harris. Well, I, I just, again, I just feel that we weren't ready for our spring sports. And again, we want to be the destination district and be, but if we're not ready for our first game or first outing outside, it, it, we definitely didn't look like it. I mean, St. Mary's here, Orchard Lake St. Mary's, again, I, they're definitely a destination top tier, you know, district or school. Um, and then follow up two days, three days later, and, and we're still not ready. Um, and the other thing, well, my last comment was our marketing program for the bond not received anything at my house. I don't know if we're I'm not sure if there was a program going out or I just didn't get it. Or yeah, I've received multiple mailers, so I'm not. Sure, I'd like to. Uh, All right. Well, it, it is uh, happening. Yeah. Continue. Yeah, we got we got several, but both absentee voters. So I don't know if it's because of that that we received a couple things at our house from the district. Again, I don't know. You know, the mailing was it a mailing list or was it all? No, it list? was uh, district wide uh, on the large postcard. Uh, well, that, we got a letter too. Actually, the, the letter, yeah, and then the the letter was to the absentee voters. Okay. Uh, but the large postcard uh, was to all all addresses in the in the district. <laughs> Any other board member comments? Item number ten is uh, recess to close session for negotiations. I'm sorry. Before we do that, Mel, I will not be physically present May 11th. And I know we're supposed to notify you for uh, posting purposes. I will be in Illinois. I will be zooming in, assuming that's still allowable. But because I already know I'm not going to be here, I'm going to let you know now. Thank you. I'm sorry to interrupt. It's your birthday. I'll send you a card early. Mm -hmm. The suggested motion is that the Board of Education recess to closed session at 6.18 p.m. to discuss negotiations. I'll entertain a motion. Support. Motion by Barry, supported by Burton Kelsey. Any discussion? Mrs. Abair, would you please take a roll call vote? Mrs. Pimer. Mrs. Burton Kelsey. Yes. Mr. Harris. Yes. Mrs. Paget. Yes. Mr. Burke. Mrs. Bauer Perry. Mrs. Barry. Thank you. Uh, that motion carries. We will now go into uh, closed session. Thank you to everybody that came. It's nice to see the round of applause. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.
Closed session at 7.22 p.m. Uh, our meeting is adjourned at 7.22 p.m. Date and time of our next meeting is Tuesday, May 11th, 2021. Uh, available both in person and via Zoom. Uh, in person here at the administration building at 24821 Hall Road in Woodhaven. Thank you and have a good evening.